I'll be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Father in heaven, Lord, you are worthy to be praised, honored, and glorified. We thank you for this day, a day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. We know, dear Father, there are so many things that are going on out there in this world, uh, things that, that, that distract us and that just, just cause us to focus on other priorities. But Lord, we know that you are the priority, and help us to uh, make it a pattern, dear Lord, make it a part of our very lives that we focus on, on your kingdom. Yes. And we focus on you and worshiping you. Lord, we, we fail you quite often, though, dear Father. And we yes. uh, are, uh, should be humbled by it, Father. And we were not humbled. Touch us, soften our hearts, dear Father, so that we can have that right relationship with you. Yes. For your son, he died for us. Yes. That we would have that right relationship with you. Mm. So, Father, we thank you for uh, what, what we know is grace. Yes. That unmerited favor that you have given us uh, because you unconditionally love us. And all we've got to do is just accept your son, Jesus. Accept him for who he is, the Savior that, that died for us, uh, that, that took our place, that took the wrath upon himself voluntarily so that we wouldn't have to. And so we thank you, dear Jesus, for who you are, uh, not just to who you are to, to God the Father, but to who you are to us. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are, you live in us for those who believe in the Son. Yes. And we thank you that you continue to allow these, these times where we can come together and focus and, and learn more about our, our, the relationship that we need to have with Jesus and with God the Father. Yes. We thank you for the revelations that you're going to give us today. We don't know what they are just yet, but we know that they're coming. Yes, I will. We, we yeah. thank you for the faith that you are, you are continuing to educate us about, dear, dear Father. Because it is so important that that substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise right now. We say these things in your precious, the, the name of your precious son, Jesus Christ, whom we love so much. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. amen. You know, one, one thing I think you'll like this, Brother Addison and I was covering this, uh, the topic on the, of some of the scriptures. Thursday, I think it was Thursday, uh, and we want to pick, I want to pick those up, it also was covered, uh, the scripture given inside going over uh, Sunday with uh, Elder Johnson, uh, and, but the title I did today was dealing with division uh, in the church, uh, because the fact is that the church has to be one to be effective for Christ, and that's a calling for Christ for us to do so. Uh, and, and the reason I want to bring some of these scriptures up today is how to apply that with what's going on in our society today. And, and the importance for the church itself to, to start lining up would be one in the things of God. Uh, so what I want to keep in mind, and so Brother Addison, what I did is I did add some scriptures, but I also put the ones about taming of the tongue and its fruit. A tree is known by its fruit. Yeah. Uh, and if we be able to get past that, if we can get ready to get past those, then I went into First uh, Corinthians or Second Corinthians, First Corinthians, dealing with division and, and the importance of, of the church to stand, try to stay one, not stay divided. Okay. okay. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share. I'm gonna let you go ahead and start off with the uh, scripture today. Galatians yeah. 6 yeah, Galatians 6.1, uh-huh. Okay. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, yes. considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Uh-huh. Bear ye one another's burdens, Whoa. and so fulfill the law of Christ. Okay. For if a man thinketh himself to be something, when he is nothing, uh -huh. he deceiveth himself. Uh -huh. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and yes. not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Uh -huh. 
Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. In all good things. And let's go ahead and cover this next slide, too. It goes with it. One second. Okay, 6, 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Yes, sir. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Mm -hmm. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Yes. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Of faith. Amen. And just to go and I put that next, that first slide up there, then we'll, we'll pick from there. Is the fact is that the, the body of Christ, especially during the times of the uh, the divisions and the, the politics and everything else, I'll leave that just for a second. Then I'm going to come back. I'm going to take it off. And the fact is that the church responsibility is restoring one another, right? Because mm -hmm. there's going to be people overtaken by, by, by their faults, all of us. And sometimes or another have some faults that kind of drive in the train and cause them to make a different decision. But the whole purpose is for us to be spiritually, to restore one another uh, with meekness. And that means with love, right? Or gentleness, right? That doesn't mean to beat them in the head. <laughs> it means to try to restore them. So I, I, I want to start from there. And if you want to, you go ahead and expound from your perspective what, what we just read. Um, this reminds me of the parable of the publican and the, uh, the, uh, I can't remember. Yeah, who, yeah the publican and the Pharisee. In the Pharisee, how the Pharisee. Oh, you're talking about the publican and the sinner, right? The one, there was a, there was a publican and a Pharisee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so the, the, the Pharisee was, I, I, this, I, that, I'm, yes, I'm that. Yeah. And uh, he was boasting in and of himself. Yes. What he does. Yes. Um, and uh, I don't know why you go to God. <laughs> and, you know, you know, trying to boast in yourself. But the 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 Republican, he was so humble. You know. Yeah. I'm 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 a sinner, and 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 I just want you to. To forgive me, forgive you know, me, or me, what you know, and whatever <laughs> else is needed. So, right. uh, one prayer was rejected. Yes, sir. The other one was accepted. Yes, sir. Uh, which is is a, uh, a awesome demonstration of these two narratives. Uh, while we, while I was reading those scriptures. I was putting myself in some of the scenarios, you know, and recalling some of the the uh, issues that I have. A lot of them are out on the on the golf course, and <laughs> <laughs> my brother Sherman can attest. Are you overtaking them a fault on the course? <laughs> well, I mean, I have issues with with people out on the course. Oh, okay, okay. And a lot of them is uh, them trying to. Uh, the, well, there's an order of play. And if you're in a foursome, uh -huh. then you have precedent over everybody else. Okay. You know, unless another foursome is 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 faster than you, then maybe you should let that foursome play through. But everybody else behind you has to play basically at your pace. Right. But now there there may be a single person that comes through and play, and obviously they're going to play a whole lot faster than the, the foursome or the threesome, which is what we mostly end up playing as. And uh, and that's fine. We'll let some of them go through. Right. But when there is uh, a single person and then a two person behind them and then two people behind them and then a two people behind them and a single person behind them and everybody is stacked up behind us and everybody wants to go through, are we supposed to let all these people go through and pass us up and wait on them. Wow. And we got there prior to them. If they, in my mind, if you wanted to play that fast, you should have got here before me. That's that's the way I think. So, uh, not only that, 
He, he's using my statement. That's what I anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what they what they're supposed to do right. is join up when the people that are twosome or single, when they catch up with the person behind them, they're supposed to join that group, which makes them play the same speed as the people in front of them. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But these people don't want to join nobody, and yet they'll be sitting on a tee box, two groups just sitting there together. And they're both waiting and complaining about us in front of them and uh, wanting to go through. But they won't join each other so that they can play at the same pace that we're playing. Right. So they expect us to let Everyone behind us expects the, us to let them go through, and I get I get issues and offended by all that because most of the time when we let these people go through, they're hitting bad shots, and yeah. then we're waiting on them. Right. Well, the other thing too. So in, in society, that's similar to what goes on in society. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but what what I said all that to say this. Yeah. No, I, I want you to do that. I'm just saying. I'm just putting that in perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what came to mind when I was reading those scriptures is, you know, I don't, Myron does not not, Myron don't need to respond okay. in any situation or circumstance. Uh -huh. Not at all. Christ should respond. So I need to think, you know, I, I hate to go on that cliche, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Uh -huh. But it's it's more than that. It was it's to me is how would he respond to these individuals? Okay. You know, not how Myron would respond. And a lot of times I, I do catch myself, you know, and I and I do uh I do talk to myself while I'm out there. And uh and most of the time I'm I'm rebuking demonic spirits, which is basically how I play. <laughs> I'm rebuking my play, <laughs> which I I, I I I believe that there's demonic forces attacking my game right. <laughs> while I'm out there. But but anyway, and I thought about you know if if I allow Jesus to respond through you, through me, Amen. You know for me because He's in me anyway. Amen. Amen. You know, and if I just back up and allow him to respond all the time, right. then I, I'm always in right standing. Okay. Always. Right. Always, regardless of the, the, the situation or circumstance, because, you know, Jesus was persecuted, mm -hmm. you know, and he said that if he was persecuted, we will be as well. Right. So as long as I stay in that mindset, then. I got to be willing to accept the persecution that may come, but expecting a peaceful outcome because it's not Myron responding. Right. It's Christ responding in and through me. Right. Because in, in, in the thing about it, one response like this, this is the rules of the game, isn't it? The, the other words, let's play. If we come to play, let's play by the rules. Right. Yeah. And the yeah. rules are the fact is that when you get to the T, that's that's your group is on the T, and the other group has to wait. And do you have to wait till you get to the next T before the other group comes in? No, it's like the next person should T off after the person, the people in front of them hit their second shot. I mean, their third shot. The third shot. I don't when I say their the third question. shot, they should be able to, to hit off of the T box. Right. Go to that, that spot. Right. Hit again. And when they get to their ball for their third shot, if it's a par four or par five, right. then that group should tee off. Exactly. They shouldn't so, hit they, the ball. And then when you get to your ball and hit, they shouldn't hit right then. Right. In other words, they can't even. They, 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 can they, see, gotta, they can see you, can't they? They can yeah. see you still in your yeah, life. They can see you. They can see you. There, there's really not a place on the course where, where they can unless – there, there's a few holes where you're below a hill, right. you know, and they can't see you, and uh, and you're and most most courses have a bell or a horn or something to let these people know that you're out of the way, and then you can hit. 
Exactly. And so normally it's that falls into where, okay, I'm going to go to my third shot or going to go to the green and putt. Right. You can hit. And if it's a part three, you just wait until we're done and go on. Right. Which would be the third shot anyway. Right. So that's how it should be. And and granted, you know, there we do let people go through when the course is, is, is open and there's not a whole bunch of people behind us. We let these people go through and play through if they're faster than us most of the time. But that means we're out there trying uh, to enjoy ourselves in it. We walk and a lot of people ride carts, so naturally their speed from one shot to the next is faster. Uh, However, like he said, if there's three twosomes behind us, they should join two two of those twosomes should join up and become a foursome. And we don't walk slow now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we we pity pat down the fairway. Yeah. And right. it's a pull system versus a push system. Amen. And nobody, nobody's uh, even though we may think negative, we don't talk communicate. Are there any negative communication? That oh, sometimes. Sometimes there is. Sometimes okay. there is. You remember uh, that time we were playing? I, I forget where we were playing. Byron we has were. to go to his rebuking. <laughs> <laughs> my statement is, hold me somebody. Because <laughs> within myself, I can't control some of my thoughts. But yeah. I want to control my tongue and my actions to be Christ-like. Slow Amen. to speak, quick to listen. Yeah. Amen. Can I tell that the course is still a reflection of what goes on in life? Too. Oh, it is. It's a microcosm. It it's really like, is. It and is. and <laughs> there's a lot of, of parables, you know, that I, I always use when I play with, with some of the with new people that I don't know. You yeah. know, and, and if and if I'm able to to talk, because I always say, you know, this is no different than living a Christian life. Exactly. You know, my objective is to get to this point. Yeah. Now, I may go into the woods or, or out of bounds or whatever, right. but God always gives me the grace to get back on course exactly. to get to the place that I'm trying to get to. And once I get to that point, there's a next faith because I'm moving from faith to faith. Exactly. You know, and I'm not, and then I can't be moved by the trees. I can't be moved by out of bounds or the water or the sand traps. I got to be focused on the goal that's set before me. Yes, sir. And so that, those are some of my, my sayings, how I talk about, you know, parables I use for, as, for living a Christian life. Exactly. Because some people be like, I ain't got time to live that life. You know, yeah. it's too hard. And, and, and I think that's the whole point is that, you know, uh, Ellen, Sharon, one of the things we've sit there and realized sometimes is people don't, and maybe sometimes even the ministry as far as equipping the saints is that, it's not so much of these rules and laws that we go by, but these the characters, our nature, our conduct, that that is really what we want to try to remind the, the church, mm -hmm. the members that go to church is, is is your character, it's your conduct, it's the fruits that you're bearing that that really does more ministering to people than anything else. Cause they're looking at our they're looking at what fruits we're bearing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, uh, and that's why, and, and so with that perspective, let me put that back up again, and then you you that scriptures, and if you want to re reflect reflect that into that conversation you just did, yeah. we're just trying to tell people say, hey, this is who we're supposed to be. So I'm gonna put that yeah, back well, up. Go ahead. Uh, one thing that I've noticed through my life is it's amazing how. People who are not saved, yes, and no. people who 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 profess Ooh. not being not not knowing uh, how to live this life or desiring to live this life, how they can always put you in check about the word. Come on, brother, come on. They always seem to know <laughs> what the word says if 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 you fall short when hey. they're watching you or. Well, actually, I should say, if you don't meet their expectations yeah. of what a Christian should be, they'll call you out in a heartbeat. Right. Because it is about your character. It's about the fruits we talk. You know, you and I, we talk yeah. about the yeah. fruit. And, and uh, Chairman, the other day we were sitting there talking, and we did like a little pop quiz, is 
how many people know the, the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit? It's one fruit, but it's characteristics right. in there. One fruit. And, yeah. and you, you'll find out that some people, I think even we was kind of uh, trying to make sure we count them all, right? We are trying to get, you know, remember uh, uh, Brother Addison, we were trying to say what they were, right? Yeah, there were nine of them. Right. Uh, and like I said, if you do a good quiz, let me come off this for a second. Uh, if you ask uh, somebody to to recite them, and you ain't got to be perfect, but just recite them. And yeah. then if you, if you actually go, you know, Sherman, if you actually go to uh, your congregation members, say, tell me what the fruits of the Spirit are. And the reason why you want to know why it's important for all of us to know them, is because that's really the conduct that we should be bearing, right? So, so you'll be amazed though when people sit and say, "Well, what, wait a minute," you know, they, they have to struggle to even remember them. That tells you that we're not trying to practice those things because that's really what practicing we should be doing: bearing fruit of, of spirit. Uh, so, like some brother Jackson. Yes. Can I throw that at you? And because I know you said you're a good, strong man of God, can you tell us what the fruit? If you do, if can you tell us? All I want is seventy percent. <laughs> and then Brother Addison, we just said for 70, right? We just said, Meekness, gentleness, long suffering. Come on, brother. That's about it right there. That's right <laughs> off the top of my head. Self-control. There you go. Thank you, brother. <laughs> that's that's temperance. And that's yeah. yeah. But and you know go ahead. the thing about it is, and, and and to be perfectly honest with you, I, I don't necessarily think you need to be able to recite these. I think that they should be a uh, a fruit that that is that is in season. You know the reason why I would say that the, it's I agree you don't have to recite them instead of talking about living them. Well, the, the reason the persona, why I say that the persona and, of the fruit, and, and, yeah, exactly. and so it. yes, yeah, sir. experience after experience, yes. After experience. That's why I threw out self control because that's yes, one of my big issues when I get upset. Yes, sir. And if you know, you know, Sherman, that's the last one of them, right? Yep. That's the very last one of those characteristics. Temperance. Uh, but you know, the I think I like the fact I like the part about the fact is that the first one is love. Love. Yeah. Right? And, and, it, and yeah, everything else flows. Everything, down. everything flows from love. And, and, and if you don't, like it says, if you don't have love, come on, you don't have nothing. You don't have nothing. You're you're like a a, a symbol, a soundless symbol. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. And he said, remember he said, all the laws hang on that. Yeah. Huh? You know. Yeah. Uh, and and most people, I think sometimes it's that's one of the focus I feel like for 2021 is to to talk about the uh, the characteristics of the fruit. You know, love, like I said, that's the main one. If we begin to mind the church, then our responsibility is to love, love one another, you know, and love into that godly type love, which is not conditional love. It's just love. It doesn't matter whether you're, whether you're black or white or red or yellow. It doesn't matter. It just falls in love. The joy, I think a lot of people understand the purpose of joy is the joy of the Lord is my strength, right? It's, it's not so much your joy, because your joy is conditional. But I need that joy when I'm going through something. I need his strength. Amen? Amen. That, that's why we want to make sure people understand the importance of the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. You know? I uh, think, uh, I, I really believe uh, when I'm thinking about these, <laughs> once, once you start off in love, mm -hmm. those other eight are not necessarily in an order of how they manifest. Right. But they will build up to to keep you in love. Come on now. And to and, and they will up undergird all the rest. Yes, sir. Like you may need faith <laughs> before joy. Yes, sir. You know, and that faith in God's word will help you have joy, which will produce peace, you know, uh, long suffering and gentleness, you know, it, it would they would all start falling in place. Yeah. But after love, whatever one is needed underneath that, you Come know, up. will will manifest exactly. to help, you know, to help the next one. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, produce in your life. Exactly. Cause like I said, because that next one is after enjoy that peace. Yeah. And you know, what what the Sherman, you the one that said the peace of God that passes all the all understanding. Come on, come on, in the midst of my turmoil. Uh you know, that peace. You know, because Jesus, when he was asleep on there was a storm and Jesus was asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that something? He he was the only one that was secure. Yes, sir. In his life, come on. You know because he 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 knew God had him. Exactly. He knew his purpose. So, yes, sir. That storm had no 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 bearing on <laughs> his existence, on his current circumstance. Exactly. Exactly. So that way, when you put this out, put it like you're using the the. the to me, I like the, the concept, or I can even call it the parable of the game, is where I need that 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 peace, right? You know, when the people, uh, I'm going slow, they're going fast. I, I need to have that peace. See, I, I'm getting to the, I'm trying to do the course. I'm running yeah. the course. And then maybe, maybe uh, they're going to need to understand that I'm going to get through this first. And y'all got to wait <laughs> because I'm going to get through. Mm -hmm. And then patience. You know, it, it, remember we talked, some people said, Brother Jackson said, don't pray for patience. <laughs> yeah, you might get it. <laughs> yeah, you gonna, look, you're going to definitely learn. <laughs> you're going to have plenty of opportunity to develop that. <laughs> exactly. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then, like I said, faith, but faith is also translated faithfulness. And that means being faithful to the rules, faithful to, to hey, if y'all want to get past us, I'm gonna let you get through. Or y'all got y'all got to understand is that this is the rules of the game. Because some people should, what do you call it? shortcut the game, right? So that's why we want to find that faithful. That faith means faithfulness. Faithfulness. You know, and then that gentleness. That means don't throw the cl club at somebody. <laughs> no, it ain't the club. It's, it's, the I club. guess it is the club. But I guess your words could be clubs. <laughs> A lot, a lot of times, it's, it's a whole bunch of words being said. <laughs> you know. I got to put my uh, story up. I wouldn't let y'all see all of them. Meekness, gentleness, goodness, and then you got uh, temperance, which is self-control. Yeah, 522. Right here, I got it. <laughs> Go ahead and read it for it. But like I said, I think, Sherman, what I'm saying is one of the things is to get people to actually start understanding, hey, you need to know what you're striving for. And you need, also you need to know that Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Uh -huh. If a tree does not bear fruit, right? You know, then he, he can be cast, you know, out. <laughs> it burnt with the fire uh -huh. because they need to bear fruit. But he said, you can't bear it without Jesus. Uh -huh. And I think that's the key is that knowing what they are and then knowing who helps you produce them. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Brother Jack. Read them for us so the people know. But the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And I'm going to continue to read. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, which we have talked about before. Yes, sir. Broking one another. Envying one another. Come on now. And you have noticed that? You want to say something about it, Brother Jackson? Well, I was just going to say the, um, you know, I had <clears throat> put in there that it, to me, it also reminds me also of uh, desiring, uh, not desiring, but denying ourselves. Because that's very difficult to do when yeah. we look at those fruits. Yeah. Um, a lot of those things are, that's not what the flesh wants to do because we know that the flesh being enmity against the father yeah. or wants to do what it wants to do when it wants to do it how it wants to do it so to deny uh what we we see as un, somebody being unjust uh -huh. against us doing us wrong you yeah. know our flesh wants to make a comeback <laughs> and, 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 and not only that but it may, may even overwhelm exactly. you know the the, the uh, what we might perceive as the the adversary so you have to deny yourself yeah. and then the other thing um, when it, that, that last verse that I read, um, not to provoke, because that's, you know, others will provoke us, try to cause our flesh to rise up. Mm -hmm. Likewise, we want to do the same. Yeah. Okay. And then the one thing that just kind of caught me was envying one another. See, sometimes envy 
it, it's like, look, the, ba- the the bad guys or the guys that are doing wrong are getting over. Yeah, yeah. So, so I need to, I need to, I need to do something so I can get that advantage. Uh huh. You know what I mean? And so when we sacrifice, because see, that's what you know. When I hear sacrifice, people think, oh, that hey, I'm just doing something. And, now listen, if you if you're I like to look at it like this. If your standard of living hasn't changed, uh-huh. you didn't really sacrifice. Amen. You know what I mean? Amen. It, it, Amen.